Tahoe is eating his lunch grain. Buffalo is eating his. And Hope is sharing hers with our pony and cat. Hi, buddy. Well, got part of the yearling heifer to come in for grain. Here comes, here comes a couple more. Um, they haven't got it figured out that they can come over to this feeder. Because, yeah, they're just going to go to that one. You can come to this one, sweetheart. Come over here. There's grain in there. So, get them to figure out that they need to come here when I feed grain and they'll get their grain. And, of course, the steers, yeah, they know where to be. And we still got rats back here. That's the mineral feeder, Dork. If you want grain, you got to go to the rest of the feeder. Um, yeah, there's a 2 by 4 there that's long enough to reach the bottom of the feeder. I played with them yesterday. I didn't hit any. I just played with them. I've only seen two pop out this morning. And then I realized there's kind of a musk smell not associated with rats. I do believe our little friend is back because I didn't. The only rats I've seen this morning was literally, and it might have only been one when I saw it twice. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking that our little weasel's back. Don't know where he's been. Maybe he's been over with the neighbors pissing him off and killing chickens. I don't know. But I've, every now and then you smell it. Well, it's taken a little bit. Where's Waldo? Yeah, Wally's right there. And they can actually fit. I'm going to say, well, eh, body-wise, I guess we kind of ran out of room over here. Because there is one more hole right there. And over here, the holes are plenty wide for two in a hole. They do it in the calf barn in a narrower slot. So I guess we're kind of looking like maybe we're one hole short. But somebody's got to eat some salt and mineral once in a while, right? Or we pop the pan out of there and feed grain in there. I don't know. But they're finally all up here for breakfast. Not sure how we made that miracle happen, but they're here. They figured out, you know, two of them came straight in. Because when we first got this opened up, the gate we took out went from there to over there. Because that's just the way it was set, and so they end up, yeah. Anyway, uh, they figured out that they could come over here and get some, so. I'm good with that. I right, still gotta go feed everybody else. And unfortunately, I've got one there that she's just not gonna get anything unless she moves around and gets a hole. like right there on the side of the air cleaner and on the aspiration tube there and this side of the engine we got a bunch of shit she missed but tough it's sitting out here it's dry now finally got the shop cleaned up enough to get it in so let's see what she does <laughs> A spider in here picking on my arm. It's warm in here, but I didn't want to smell that. So, I 
Hey, she moves. Might pay attention. I won't run anything over getting back out of here. I don't want to run her over any fast. Because I want it to get there. So, yeah, I ain't got too much video today. I'll get it getting this thing in there, right? So many things they could have done different when they built these tractors. Just, it'd be so nice if that big housing wasn't all there and partly over the engine. Oh, yeah, if you notice the recycle bins up here. Because there was a bunch of cardboard in the shop. Becky asked me to bring it over here. I drag it halfway. It was heavy. Set outside with the lid cramped open because there was too much stuff in it that wasn't broke down. Oh, it was about half full of water. No wonder it was so heavy. Anyway, get it back in there and get it in position and then bring it back. Get the grease monkey. She just had to shut her Bluetooth thing off. It's in here. First thing you do is right there. There she's probably off a little bit for hitting her pan all the way, but we'll see. I told her she didn't need the wrench, and then she asked for it back because it got a little snug. And of course, she says, well, what size is it? I don't know. You're down there. I said, most are like an inch and a quarter. That one happens to be inch and an eighth. Which, from 15, 16 to an inch and a quarter, our big wrenches is still laying on the bench. Because we can't get into the corner to put them away. And, when I saw this, I thought, yeah, God, she's really blowing. No, that's water out of the oh. axle tube. Oh, I told her what color it was. Yeah, baby. She didn't believe me. That's it ain't nothing like what was in the John Deere, though. Fuck no, it ain't. It's probably still going to end up taking that fire extinguisher through with the gasoline in it and have to hose stuff inside there because oil and water makes glue. Oh, let me take that out. Just yeah, because it ain't going to fucking matter anyway. That's it's dirtier on that yet, too. But this side, she got cleaned up pretty good. How much does this hold? I know this one holds 20 quarts, but how much? It's 20 quarts, plus the water that's in it. It'll fit that. It better. Otherwise, we're going to have a mess. And you get here on the dark side. Even well, darker they're going to snowball chance and how my happy ass going to be picking this son of a bitch up. Even darker when the doors are open and natural light's coming in. But And she kind of she kind of missed this corner a bit. But that's all right. It'll all clean up. One way or the other. But this is the part I still don't like. Cause this thing's a pain in the ass. So she's getting nervous. It's got a long ways to go. But if that shit gets on the floor, I don't want to be in here. Well, that kind of looks like what it looks like. It's rainbow oil. Bubbly rainbow oil. She don't dribble on me. I don't drop my phone. And it's still dribbling in the bucket over there. It'll dribble for a while. She keeps trying to look and see if there's little shiny Absolutely spots. Well, th there is because the water and it's making rainbows, but it's done nothing that should cause filings anywhere. I mean, even if a bearing went, it'd just be some brass. And if it went, it'd be very obvious. If you got a rag in there, you'd have a very, very shiny rag. So, that's the point we are so far. Trying to remember what all we really do actually have to take the jerk off of here. And, yeah. And I don't remember what we did for the fuel line before. Fuel may have been left down low enough it didn't matter, but it's too freaking full this time around. Because it will gravity out that line if we take it off. Take it off and plug it. So, and you know, it's their own fitting. So, like Ty says, take it off and plug it real quick, but you got to have a fitting to put on it. Oh, well, we'll figure it out. So, and part of the first portions of dismantling is getting the muffler out of the way. Well, that one's easy to get to. 
There's four of them here on the turbo housing. Yes, there's one on the other side of that. And I don't care. You keep different brands of wrenches because they're not all timed the same. Yeah, none of them are timed right. I got it budged and that was it. So, hey, the homemade John Deere starter wrench. It actually is working quite nicely. Although this one happens to be the worst one to get out because it's probably the hardest one. The outside two were easy, rattled them back and forth with a little impact and they came right out. And this one was relatively easy. Put a wrench on it, backed it up with another one and almost came out with my fingers after that. But no, this one, we're gonna be pretty decent pull every step of the way. And these are only three quarter inch bolts, if that. And yeah, three quarters. I mean, the thread I don't even think stuck through up above. But, you know, being on the exhaust, just be thankful last time around, they were brand new bolts and they were lathered up with anti seize so thick that it's not even funny. Otherwise, I wouldn't be getting them out. That one's for Rick Borg. NICs does have its place, and some people say it doesn't do any good on exhaust, and everybody I know around here I think it's paid to do this stuff. They go through a lot of NICs, especially on exhaust. They do these joints with them. This one's just got the one joint, but the case are segmented heads, so there's three joints. Um, still see some residue there from NICs. I know there should be some in there. Any place, and ooh, that's loose enough to go with the fingers. Not that my fingers fit in there by any means. I can finger tip it, and it's turning. It's still turning, and there it is. The threads look a little like shit, but you look at new ones. Oh, look, the carpet's lit. I mean, Becky's here. That part of the fuel system's off. Mm. Filter housing's hanging there. I remember that's what we did last time. It's out of the way. That's all you need. Especially since that is the tank shut off. The top of the tank is up here and it's only down about that far. So disconnect that line. Fuel will pour out. All the injector lines are both loose at the injector. Till then's got all of them down here except for this one. Freaking fittings loose in the pump because this line and that nut are rusted together. Fun. Oh, did I mention fun? And yeah, we emptied that. My plan is before we drop the pan to rinse some diesel through there, it'll rinse some of that gooey stuff out to a point. Because it's still sitting there dripping. Just ever so slowly. And let's see. Yeah, the oil's been dumped for four hours and it's still dripping that fast. So, yeah. Everything's off up here that's coming off other than we got to get the blow-by tube off, breather tube, and little stuff like cab heater hose. I think that's where that one goes. Although I'm not overly sure. It should be. I know it is because that's when you got to turn on to get heat in the cab. And I don't know where the other cab line is, but that one's into the head, so it's got to come out. I'll have to take this line loose. That's the return line. Take it loose, plug it, and cap the piece there. And then start taking stuff off the front. You know, like upper radiator hose. I, I so wish they'd have done these just a little differently, you know? didn't need all this. I could have come right up there, still put things together the same way, but that's not what they did. I mean, the, the lucky thing on here is, from what I can tell, the water pump is fastened to the block. It is not fastened to the head, so it can stay but we got to get everything off of this. 
possibly take it off. You know, there's just so many little things that they could have done differently. Uh, hey, there's the other cab heater. I knew it was over here somewhere. So, anyway, lots of little shit to take off. And yes, that's our wonderful fix. We didn't have any lights on the front. Half the wires were screwed up. That's the only way to hold it together and keep it working. So that's how it works. And still got the turbo lines to pull. Not that big of a deal. Clamp off here. Slide the tube out after taking the cap screws out here. Just spin it. Pull it out. It's out of the way. This one, got to take a clamp off here. Take the fitting loose there. And it's kind of the same way, but way it's in there I'm not real sure it'll come out without getting the valve cover out of the way first oh you know little things like that and Becky decided to clean stuff up up here yeah now we got a mess here to contend with which you know Ty couldn't get to that to clean that anyway It'd be nice if I could run it right now take it back down and pressure wash the hell out of it but that's not gonna happen at this point in time and yeah, this bracket still has to come out and that. And I don't remember if those might be hit. Yeah, one of those is a head bolt that holds that bracket on. That makes it even more fun. You know, head bolts should just hold the head, nothing else, my personal opinion. So anyway, it's time to put a video up. Keep dinking with this thing and see how far we get. Just keep making a mess. Then clean the mess up because you get a lay in it. I was really hoping to get the pan off today, which it may still come off today. Get the pan and the valve cover off, but I want to get the injector lines off first. So I sprayed some fluid filament around the tube on that nut and see if that works in and gets it loose and then I was doing a little hammer to hammer work my big one and my little one beating on the nut between them see if I could vibrate that loose now anyway and hey for those of you that need rain this was our 70% chance of rain day we got a shower last night for about 30 seconds it was just enough that all the gravel was wet and then it quit other than that, hasn't been a drop. So it's getting to be kind of like the last four years. Oh, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. and Yeah, it doesn't rain here. So I know you guys up there in Alberta, you could use some rain. And uh, Chad and Jeremy, both of you, I hope you guys are staying safe. And uh, there's a guy on TikTok, uh, Steve Mack. It's not the same Steve Mack that is on YouTube that's always at Gerald Farms stuff. It's a different guy. He's in, I believe, in Alberta. One of those oil field truck drivers. And uh, he put a video up showing the maps of all the fires and showing some of the fires. He was right there. So, um, you guys, hey, I feel for you. I really do. And I uh, hope and pray that you all make it out of that all right. Don't get affected too much by it. So anyway, the rest of you, keep them in your prayers, please. And thank you for watching. And we will see what the rest of today and what tomorrow brings. Hope you all have a great Monday.